Hello guys and welcome to Need for Speed Heat running on 4K resolution with three different presets ultra high and medium on the uh, single RTX video card and Intel Core i9 Gen i9 9900K but the i9 is emulated as i5 9600K to be able to push 5300 megahertz per each core with only six cores, six threads uh, right now, as you can see in the background, my CPU utilization is full, 100%. Right now, I'm utilizing my CPU, as you can see, at 100%. But this is with a 6 strat, so be uh, careful over here. And look like to play Need for Speed at the total comfortable maximum average FPS, I would advise you to play it with the 8 thread CPU. And try to make sure that these 8 threads are physical, without any hyper trading technology, so it's not like emulated threads for the best possible FPS and yes I have a lot of uh, apps open over here they're kinda idling Intel Extreme Utility, CPU Z, IDA64 and even the Cinema Bench R20 okay but in the game uh, the CPU utilization will go down to about like 70 percent so when I'm going to be in the game our CPU utilization will drop let me real quick go ahead and show it to you so it's still like six cores, six threads CPU is almost enough. And I would say I'm going to test it with eight core HS to find out for sure. As you can see right now under the MSI afterburner at the right top corner, my CPU utilization is kind of 50%. So we're kind of having a healthy CPU utilization. Let me go back to Windows. And yes, it dropped. As you can see, the CPU utilization dropped, but then it picked up again to 100% still even when need for speed heat on the background and the reason of course because i have a lot of apps open they still under idle status but still kind of utilizing a little bit of our cpu so i would say if you going to record the game and today i'm recording this game with external professional video recording equipment that is the fps will be the real fps without any taxing on fps just like when i'm not recording it will be just the same fps the same performance of my system so if you're recording not with a shadow play if you're recording with something else uh, i advise you to go ahead and grab yourself at least a thread cpu and make sure it's a uh, physical a threads okay without any hyper trading technology and such so i'm going to go back jump into the game so pretty much 6 core 6 thread CPU looks like it's still enough at 4K resolution and it's powering it's uh, the Need for Speed Heat powered by the Frostbite game engine. As you can see right now MSI to Burner is showing us at the right top corner that CPU utilization is below 60% so it's still enough. But when I'm getting into the desktop, I'm, I'm on top of it, I'm utilizing some other apps. So when I'm playing the game, this other apps is not kind of utilized on my CPU. But when I'm getting to the desktop, they kind of reinitializing itself and they start utilizing the CPU heavily with the need for speed on the background. So it's reaching the 100% on six threads. But I'm going to test this Need for Speed Heat with the 8 cores, 8 threads, and all what I want you to do, just pay attention to the uh, FPS. And we're going to find out if FPS will increase or not. Right now I'm playing 4K resolution with maximum possible visuals. Let me real quick go ahead and demonstrate it to you. So 4K resolution 16 divided by 9 aspect ratio and uh, with ultra preset and then I'm going to show you high in a few minutes and medium. So the purpose of this video is not the gameplay, the purpose of this video is just to show you the performance and what I'm thinking as the owner of uh, two Titan RTXs but right now I'm only having single Titan RTX in the system, the secondary Titan RTX is removed to avoid any hot air pocket and uh, of the owner of two RTX 2080 Ti video cards so pretty much I experienced the top dog uh, touring GP architecture such as two RTX 2080 Ti video cards in 2019 and in 2020 two Titan RTX video cards in SLI so as a GPU utilization as you can see 97% at 4k which is I would say almost excellent it's very good but not excellent excellent 99% constantly that means that we only uh, wasting about 1% for the 
for something else for the uh, system resources and 1% will be like 40 CUDA cores every single percent wa wasted in terms of the GPU utilization is 40 CUDA cores at the 4K resolution as you can see my VRAM usage is a little bit above 8000 megabytes which is 8113 megabytes the right top and the system RAM usage is almost 8000 megabytes which is 7700 megabytes the latency delay will be below 15 milliseconds 15 milliseconds not bad and FPS is way above 70 FPS average sometimes even reaching 80 82 so I'm just curious how Need for Speed Heat will perform with 8 core 8 threads and I'm certainly going to go ahead and show it to you in a different video but right now you're looking at the raw FPS without um, recording taxing uh, on our FPS or taxing anyhow on our system performance so the system is running just like I'm playing the game without the recording so single uh, RTX 2080 Ti when it's going to be heavily overclocked, maximum overclock on air will show us the similar result, keep that in mind. Because today, right now during this gameplay, I'm running my Titan RTX at stock. Maximum overclock on Titan RTX can bring you maximum 3-5 FPS, it depends how well you're going to overclock it, how well you're going to cool it. On air, right now I'm running my Titan RTX with liquid metal thermal compound paste uh, on the GPU and IC Diamond thermal compound paste on the VRAM and on the power distribution and every single chip on the Titan RTX PCB. So if you're going to use, uh, let's say, but I'm still using the air uh, NVIDIA dual fan heatsink on it the stock heatsink that came with the Titan RTX but if you're going to use let's say the hybrid water cooler on top of it or even some custom loop with the liquid metal you can overclock even higher with this type of preset maximum what I can achieve during the overclock just the liquid metal on the CPU and IC thermal compound on the VRAM uh, can be maximum 3 FPS when the scenario when I'm receiving about 60 dash 90 fps my maximum fps increase will be 3 fps by overclocking gpu additionally 100 megahertz and overclocking vram additionally 2000 megahertz which bring it from 14000 megahertz to 16000 megahertz on the vram right now i'm running 14000 megahertz and that's about it but when you're going to use the hybrid water cooling or any uh, custom loop for your water cooling setup there is a possibility that you can achieve 5 fps okay pretty much uh, the formula is simple when you're running 60-90 fps any overclock on the video card will bring you about 3-5 fps when you're running 30-60 fps any overclock on the video card will bring you maximum 2 fps when you're running like 90-120 uh, fps any overclock and the video card will bring you about 5-7 FPS. This is the formula that I saw throughout the multiple years using multiple video cards and applying multiple overclocks on them using multiple um, thermal and um, cooling solutions. So I would say 82, 83 FPS average, sometimes dropping like to 78, 76. The latency delay below 15 milliseconds, but still above 10 milliseconds. The gameplay is comfortable. And this is 4K resolution at Ultra. Let's go ahead, guys, and switch to high, and let's see if we can improve our FPS. Okay, here we go at high. I'm recording this video, and I'm coming in real time. You can probably can hear the Titan RTX a little bit uh, spinning the fans because the fan rotation right now is 100%. And... Um, the case is open. It's kind of noisy, but it's not as noisy as two uh, Titan RTXs and SLI or two RTX 2080 Ti video cards and SLI. This this stuff is noisy. As you, as you can uh, as you can see, the uh, volumetric particles and burnouts was kind of still very high FPS in 80s, kind of 79 80s. Usually, in for speed, uh, 
2015, which is the AKA Need for Speed 16. Uh, when you're doing the burnouts, your FPS dropping by about four or five FPS, but over here is not that much as you can see. Still dropping, still taxing in terms of the FPS, those photometric particles while I'm doing the burnout, but not that much. But we increase in terms of our FPS now by about 10 FPS. Look at this. From 82, we went like 92. And uh, we decrease the latency delay. So right now the latency delay will be 10 milliseconds average, sometimes even a little bit below than 10 milliseconds. So this is ultimately totally comfortable gameplay right now. On a single video card, almost 100 FPS, like 10 FPS shorter from 100 FPS. Let me real quick overclock my Titan and show you um, the difference. I'm just going to do it real quick. So I'm going to show you the stock and I'm going to show you the kind of slight overclock, 7500, uh, 75 megahertz under the GPU overclock and plus 1000 megahertz under the VRAM, which will show us uh, 2000 megahertz additionally on the VRAM overclock. So VRAM will go to 16,000 megahertz and the GPU will go to 1980 megahertz. Let's go ahead and have a look at this. Let's actually, let's go ahead and bring it to 85 uh, to 200, like I told you. 100 is still kind of acceptable. It's going to bring it to 100. So it's going to be above, way above 2000 megahertz, even if it's not showing 2000 megahertz, but believe me, it's way above 2000 megahertz because it's not using the maximum turbo boost on the NVIDIA GPU in the game. But if the game going to use the maximum turbo boost, the NVIDIA driver decided not to use the maximum turbo boost. We are about 2060 megahertz right now. We increased the FPS and uh, additional 2000 megahertz on the VRAM, as you can see, up to 16,000 megahertz. Did we increase the FPS? Mm, I don't know, it's still 92. Let's see, we should be around like 96. Nope. Yep, 96. Yep, we did. We did. 98, 99, 97. So we did increase in terms of the FPS, as I told you, 3. We, we increased about 3 FPS, as you saw. I would say 3, 5 FPS. So maximum what I saw, like 92. And right now I just saw 99, 97. So about 5 FPS here. When you're going to uh, overclock the Titan RTX, additionally 100 megahertz on the GPU and uh, 2000 megahertz on the VRAM and 2000 megahertz on the VRAM GDR6 Samsung memory on Titan RTX or RTX 2080 Ti video cards, which is the same VRAM used by NVIDIA, is safe. And at 16,000 megahertz, it's stable. Yeah, we increased about 5 FPS for sure during our overclock. Let me real quick bring it back uh, to Ultra just to see how it's going to look with the overclock at Ultra. As again, my Titan RTX GPU is running on liquid metal thermal compound paste. You're going to show the higher temperature and your CPU, your GPU is going to thermal throttle. This is pretty much, guys, the fastest possible performance on a, a 9th generation Intel CPU with the Titan RTX right now with the home safe environment because the i9 uh, 9900k or i5 9600k are the fastest cpus nothing can match it in terms of the latency delay they have the lowest latency delay and uh, in terms of frequency per core and in the pc games the frequency per core is what you need if you're not bottlenecking your cpu and in our case right now i'm 63 percent on, on cpu so pretty much technically six core six thread cpu is more than enough even if it's powered by the uh, frostbite game engine and i believe the frostbite game engine that they use in for speed heat is not like uh, in battlefield 5 or even if it's the same uh, frostbite game engine revision as battlefield 5 but it's not utilized with so much CPU need as Battlefield 5, but most definitely, guys, Battlefield 5 is one of those games that 6 core 6 threads is not enough at 4K resolution. And with the 8 core 8 thread CPU, physicals 8 thread CPU, you will receive higher FPS for Battlefield 5. When you're playing uh, 4K resolution, you want to have at least 10 physical threads, 
healthy CPU without any hyper trading, just 10 physical threads. It means that if you have just 10 core, 20 threads, for you the best scenario will be shut down those hyper trading technology and just use only 10 core, 10 threads. And this is the, to get the maximum healthy average FPS in Battlefield um, 5. Hopefully this makes sense. Yep, we're 80, 82, 83, 85. So we increase over, over here as well, 87, 88 by 5 FPS. So overclock on Titan RTX will give you additional 5 FPS. And there is a possibility this will be the same scenario when you're going to overclock your RTX 2080 Ti video card because pretty much they're almost using the same GPUs. Uh, but Titan RTX has about 250 CUDA course advantage, which is not that enough when you're running single Titan RTX versus the single RTX 2080 Ti to take advantage or heavy advantage over RTX 2080 Ti video card especially when you're running stock Titan RTX RTX 2080 Ti when is again heavily overclocked home safe environment and air can pretty much match your performance of the single Titan RTX but when you're running two Titan RTXs in SLI this 256 CUDA cores becomes 512 times 2 512 to the course advantage and then uh, two Titan RTXs in SLI will take a heavy advantage over two RTX 2080 Ti video cards in SLI and yeah this the, this type of uh, advantage you, you cannot match even if you're going to overclock two RTX 2080 Ti video cards because 512 CUDA core is a serious guys competition against your two RTX 2080 Ti in form of two RTX uh, two Titan RTXs which is the top dog during GPU architecture video cards. But if you're playing 4K resolution, uh, SLI even on two Titan RTXs doesn't make that big sense. So I advise you, anything which you're playing 4K resolution on Turing GPU architecture, you don't need to have not a single Titan RTX, not a two Titan RTXs in SLI. It's just going to be a waste of money. You want to get maximum two RTX 2080 Ti video cards in SLI, but even that is going to be a waste of money because 4K resolution in form of Turing GP architecture, single RTX 2080 Ti video cards will be more than enough. So if 4K resolution is your kind of resolution in terms of PC gaming, single RTX 2080 Ti will be more than enough and this is going to be the best choice, okay? In form of Turing GP architecture. And if you're watching this video right now and you don't have the um, RTX 2080 Ti video card or if you don't have a Titan RTX video card, then I advise you to buy it in the beginning of 2021 or in the middle of 2021. Uh, single RTX 2080 Ti video card will cost about $550 in the beginning or in the middle of 2021. And single Titan RTX video card will cost in the middle of 2021 in about $650, $700. And then maybe I'm advising you to get two Titan RTXs for additional hundred dollars used like new on eBay if it's going to be like 700 bucks if you kind of low budget dude go ahead and collect that money and do not buy equivalent to Ampro GP architecture get the Titan RTX due to that heavy VRAM capacity 24 gigabyte of VRAM capacity and then get yourself later on in 2022 another Titan RTX for like about 550 bucks on eBay use like new and uh, put them in SLI and dominate anything till 2025 because 4K resolution you're going to dominate and in 2022, 2023 even two Titan RTXs will be kind of stressing a lot in 4K resolution scenarios during that time but that heavy VRAM capacity will be more than enough to play till 2025 hopefully guys this makes sense so this was the Ultra I showed you ultra with the overclock let's go ahead and have a look at the the reason why i'm driving around just to show you the fps hopefully you understand that and look at this we have frozen so 100 100 megahertz additional overclock is not enough guys not enough even when you're running liquid metal thermal compound paste Okay, so pretty much, I, I, what's, the diff, uh, what's the point for me to show you the medium? Pretty much if you're running RTX 2080 Ti video card or if you're running Titan RTX, you want to play high or ultra, but as you can see during this video, 100 megahertz on a GPU, on a Titan RTX, and my revision of Titan RTX will be a TU-102-4 
400A. It's not 300A as that was the launch with the Titan RTX, it's 400A and I believe the 400A uh, Titan RTX is unstable and uh, this is the kind of newer revision by NVIDIA and they probably decided just go ahead and cut that overclocking advantage because the Jensen Huang is against the overclocking on his GPUs. And while he's CEO and founder and while he's going to change his mind until that point as you can see, this is this is this is the deal. And I heard from my internals that he doesn't like people who overclocks the um, Nvidia video cards. Okay, so there is a possibility that TU one hundred two dash three hundred GPU can go higher than that. And I saw a lot of people was doing that, but a TU one hundred two four hundred cannot go even 100 megahertz on the GPU, even on the liquid metal. And it doesn't matter, guys, if you're going to use the water cooling setup on it because the temperature still was healthy. As you can see, it just, the GPU just go ahead and refuse that frequency. And there is a possibility that it's not enough voltage. This is the, the, the reason probably why it did it because the temperature was healthy. But there is no biases, over voltage biases for Titan RTX available. So pretty much this is our chances to, to just to have it like that and there is no other way around okay so yeah titan rtx is not a great overclocker so if you want to have a great overclocker get yourself rtx 2080 ti at least newer titan rtx's and my titan rtx is the newer because i got my this titan rtx in uh, uh, like uh, october 2019 november 2018 and look like they're using 400 uh, tu 102-400 instead of tu 102-300 as it was at the launch and look like it doesn't want to take that much uh, overclock on gpu okay that's it guys uh i showed you everything what you need to know thank you so much for watching as again what's the point to run the medium for people who's thinking to run the medium um on titan rtx you're just going to waste your your video card you don't want to do that Okay, because the GPU utilization will be low at the medium preset, it will it will be like 92%. So pretty much you're going to waste about 8% of your GPU utilization on the Titan RTX and 8%, 1% is 40 CUDA cores times 8, which 360 CUDA cores. So pretty much you just lost your advantage over the RTX 2080 Ti. Not even that, you are in the minus in terms of the CUDA core count. Okay, hopefully you like this video and uh, let me try to go ahead and uh, close this deal over here. I explained it to you pretty well, I, I, I think. And show you a little bit about my system and we're going to go ahead and wrap up with this video. Look at this, yeah, it looked like a driver went south completely. Yep. Yeah, but let me tell you about my system. Today I'm running possible, maximum possible scenario for the single Titan RTX because I'm running the, as again, i9-9900K, but not at 5.1 gigahertz, which is the maximum stable frequency for i9-9900K. It's stable in games, but not stable anywhere. So 5,000 gigahertz for i9-9900K with 8 core, 16 threads will be the maximum possible stable scenario for the average user. But I decided to go ahead and uh, put it 300 megahertz stable at everything additional in terms of shutdowning the two cores in the bias and shutdowning the hyper trading technology. So pretty much I'm running all the physical cores, all the physical threads for the maximum possible performance by avoiding any uh, virtual cores, any virtual threads. And uh, the DDR4 was running very aggressive timing, CL9, 2400 megahertz, 1T command, unheard of. I'm over outperforming 3600 megahertz at CL16 on the Ryzen. 3950x um, in a kind of multi threaded test. So you can imagine how fast is my memory. So, in, the, in terms of PC game, I'm also taking a lot of advantage of that CL9 timing. But I'm going to record a video where I'm going to compare this uh, DDR4 with CL9 timing 2400 megahertz versus 2400 megahertz with CL13 timing. And we're going to see how. Uh, this aggressive timing taking advantage in, tough, uh, in terms of the FPS in PC gaming. But till then, uh, till, till then, go ahead and subscribe, smash that like button. As again, we watch this video. And uh, if you 4K resolution gamer, if you're not YouTuber like me, that's showing 8K resolution and above, get yourself RTX 2080 Ti completely worth if you're trying to buy it right now in kind of brand new condition. If you watching this video in 2021, Check out eBay, use like new Titan RTX and get it uh, used like new for like around 700 bucks. It's totally worth it. And then in 2022, get another one as a item 
and 99% uh, of PC games running beautifully on SLI. If uh, some games doesn't support SLI, um, I'm running right now a new project and it's SLIready.com website where I'm going to teach you step by step how to enable SLI in the games that doesn't support SLI and take advantage of multiple video cards by NVIDIA. All right. Thank you so much for watching. As again, I play 4K, AK, I play 8K, AK, I play 16K, AK, UHD King was with you today. Why UHD King? Because I was the first YouTuber that showed you 16K resolution gameplay back in of May 2016 on four Titan X Maxwell GPU architecture. I touch all the Titan X six Titan X Maxwells and I touch Titan XP's, Titan RTX's as you can see and all the video cards below the Titans and uh, 9080. TI, 1080 Ti, uh, 2080 Ti, and I have a lot of experience. Hopefully you learn from this video. Subscribe, positive comments. Check out right now the videos that I'm putting for you on the screen. If you don't see, check the video description, check the video comments. And uh, I will see you till the next time. Have a great day.